Welcome to learn about allocating student study time and workload in teaching and learning. Have you ever considered why calculating student workload matters? Calculating study time allocation and workload should be done in order to ensure that students have a realistic chance to achieve the intended learning outcomes. When there is enough time to study, the students are more likely to adopt a deep learning approach and the quality of learning increases. Reserving enough time for studying also supports students' motivation for studying. What happens if there is not enough time for learning? When there is not enough time, deep and understanding learning cannot happen. This leads to using learning techniques aimed at road memorization and repetition of the content. And the aim of learning can be lost and the core content and skills are not learned. This in turn leads to decline in study success and a weakened belief in self-efficacy. The student may start to think, I cannot do this. The student's motivation and interest in studies may decline and time spent in studying decreases, leading to weaker learning outcomes. The negative circle is ready. Workload means different things for the teacher than for the student. When considering the teacher's point of view, we can use the concept of objective workload. Objective workload can be defined as the estimated time to be used in teaching and learning activities related to learning outcomes. It is commonly measured as the number of hours that students are expected to spend on studying. It can be calculated also for the teacher's time spent for teaching. When considering the student's point of view, the concept of subjective workload is used. It can be described as a combination of the demands placed on the student and the effect of these demands on the student. Students experience heavy workloads, for example, in the form of emotional or psychological pressure or stress. Subjective workload involves a complex interplay of different factors and components that are related to the teaching and learning environment, the learner's attitude, skills and motivation, and the learner's personal traits and life situation. While a teacher cannot control and have an effect on all of these factors, there are some things that can be considered in teaching to reduce the perceived workload. As a teacher, you can support your students' motivation by setting realistic learning outcomes for your course, provide different kinds of opportunities and options for completing the course, justify why it is important to learn the course content, for instance, by providing examples of how the content can be applied in practice. Avoid or reduce assessments that emphasize road learning and committing small details to memory. Help the students with time management and provide visualization of the time that will be needed to complete each assignment during the course. Now, let's look a little closer at how study time allocations can be calculated in practice. ECTS, that is, the European Credit Transfer and Accumulation System, was developed by the European Higher Education Area to provide students with an estimation of the time required to take a course. The ECTS credit system is used in most European countries to provide comparable criteria and increase the transparency and readability of the educational process amid the growing global dimension of education. An academic year is defined as 1600 hours, which equals 60 ECTS credits, and thus one credit is 26.7 hours. Study time allocations are usually calculated in round numbers, so 27 hours is one credit. A bachelor's degree in many countries equals 180 ECTS credits, and according to the credit system, it should be completed in three years. A master's degree is usually 120 ECTS credits, and it should be completed in two years. For individual learners, however, the actual time spent achieving the learning outcomes may vary. When calculating student study time allocation and objective workload for your course, you can use time allocation models based on the teaching and learning activities and the assessment methods used. 
if you have experience in certain teaching and learning activities, your own estimation is as good a basis for study time allocation as the existing time allocation models. However, it is good to collect feedback from the students in either case to be able to adjust the objective workload accordingly. Here you see some examples of how much time should be allocated to certain teaching and learning activities based on one time allocation model. If you have lectures or similar activities in your course, the one-to-one -one ratio in this model suggests that when having a one-hour lecture, you should also reserve one hour of independent study time, that is, time to think for the students. So the total time reserved for this activity in terms of the time allocation for the student is two hours. With group work, the ratio is one to two, and with problem-based learning, the ratio is one to five. Let's look at one example of calculating study time allocation. Our example course is five EZTS credits, its duration is 10 weeks, and it has 20 participants. Looked at from the student's view, the course starts with pre-assignment, before the teaching and learning sessions start. Based on previous experience with similar assignments and on collected student feedback about previous implementations of the course, it has been estimated to take six hours for the student to complete the pre-assignment, which includes some time to think. There are four face-to-face -face teaching and learning sessions during the course, Using the one-to-one -one ratio as suggested in the time allocation model, we will reserve an equal amount of time for the individual time to think. This equals 44 hours. The course includes reading the literature, approximately 150 pages in the student's mother tongue. This equals 10 hours according to the time allocation model. It is also in line with previously collected student feedback. The course assignment is done during the course as a process, one step at a time. According to previous experience, six hours is quite sufficient amount of time for most students per one step. A total of 30 hours is reserved for the assignment. Time to think is calculated in these hours. The students give and receive peer feedback during the course about their assignments. Every student reads and gives peer feedback with four other students. Three hours is reserved for the feedback with one student, and it also includes time to think. In addition, the students do group work during the course. According to the time allocation model, the time reserved for this should be in a one to two ratio, meaning that when there is one hour of actual active working time with the group, there should be twice as much time spent on preparing for the group work and for having time to think. So the total time for the group work is 33 hours. When all the learning activities are summed up, it totals 135 hours, which equals 5 ECTS credits. You can easily visualize the student workload and study time allocation for the students by, for example, using an Excel chart. Visualization may help your students to picture how much time they actually need to allocate to the course on a weekly basis. It is good for teachers to also calculate their own workload and the time they need to allocate for teaching. From the teacher's part, the course preparation starts before the course actually begins. Sometimes the whole course needs to be planned from the beginning, and this takes its own time. However, let's consider for now that our example course is an existing course and that it only needs some updating. The 20 hours is an estimation of time needed to plan and prepare for the course, and this is based on previous experience. Also, work during and after the course related to student guidance and study administration needs to be taken into consideration. In this case, we estimate that 20 hours needs to be reserved for this. Time for face-to-face -face sessions is also allocated for the teacher. In addition, teacher preparations for the sessions take approximately two hours per session, so the total amount of hours reserved for the teacher is 30. Time should be reserved also for finding suitable literature. 
In our example course, the literature already has been selected for the most part, and therefore an estimation of 1 to 5 hours is calculated for this. In addition, the course assignments need to be planned. When creating a whole new assignment, more hours will be usually spent on this. With this course, the assignment already exists and only needs some updating. Two hours is calculated for this. The students get teacher feedback about their assignments during the course. For this course, this also functions as the course assessment. Previous experience shows that teachers will spend approximately one hour per student to read the assignment and write the feedback. In this example, there are 20 students, so 20 hours is reserved for this. Finally, the teacher needs to reserve time for guiding and facilitating the group work. Approximately two hours are reserved for each group, and as there are four to five groups, this will take approximately eight to ten hours of the teacher's time. All in all, the teacher should reserve at least 104 hours of time for planning, preparing and teaching the course. Have you ever calculated how much time you use planning and teaching your courses? As an exercise, calculate the study time allocation for one of your courses. You can find a template for this on this module's web pages. <laughs>